Universe. Welcome back to Chelas with Chavos here. We have a special edition. We have a remote episode. Uh, well, some of them have been remote, but we have somebody who's out of the state. Uh, somebody who was part of the Chavos organization when it was founded. I was actually with this individual along with uh, Presidente, a now Presidente, uh, Kevin over at Creative Preacher back way back when. But I want to give a shout out to one of the founding padrinos, one of the founding members of the Chavos movement here in San Diego, Mark. And went Mark what up? all the way from ATL, Atlanta. Mark, hey. how are you? And then obviously we have Miguel. Hola, yeah, I can't forget Miguel. Hey, cool, man. Legend. Yeah. There you go. He's like, yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> man, I am doing good, guys. Um, man, I'm trying to think. Right now, honestly, so we moved out here, like you guys know. Um, man, everything's been good. I've just been started working coffee, so that's why we moved out here. So I've worked in coffee, been doing that. Um, going to tech school at the moment too, so that's uh that's unique, that's different. Going through okay. a boot camp. Um, and then babies, man, the babies are going to school, so just kind of keeping it simple. Um, trying to get connected with the creative scene out here and doing some cool things. But other than that, man, it's been low key since since moving out to Atlanta low key in the sense of nothing really too crazy for me as far as my involvement with community or anything like that but it's been it's been fun with what's happening in the family so yeah man but I, I'm missing home man I am missing home like crazy bad man I think the child miss you too Miguel how are you doing today I'm pretty good man as I mentioned I'm glad to see I mean you guys survived the the, the yeah, tropical storm yeah. right there the little had right it was a hurricane, you, you it was a hurricane the little rain we had a little rain, you know, the little tornado warnings and the earthquakes. I mean, I'm glad you guys are, are all alive. I mean, but not. Uh, honestly, no, it's been really good. I uh, just um, was super tired. I went to Montana last week for, you know, with the, for the little baby moon with the wife. Um, How's it go, man? Yeah, man. You know, Trying to get, you know, just, just the last two of us. That was it for a little bit. You know, I had a little bit of a, you know, I thought the baby was going to be born yesterday, but good thing she isn't ready yet because... I'm not ready yet, so we'll, we'll wait, man. <laughs> You're actually recording a podcast, man? Damn. Oh, no, no, she's okay right now. She's, all right, she's, all right. Yeah, <laughs> she's, she's baking, so she's cool. Uh, no, but honestly, man, everything's been really good, man. Like I said, I'm glad everybody's super safe and, uh, you know, everybody's back out to just being normal in San Diego. And finally, I'm super happy to get to talk to Mark, man. I I feel like every Real. single time this something happens or we just, uh, it just the schedules yeah, never yeah. link up. And and this is this is a great time for everything, man. Oh, yeah, we got sure. it going on. Yeah. So, I mean, let us know, Miguel. Like you, you, the Chavos have been pushing for Mark to come in. Obviously, I was saying a founding <laughs> member, founding one of one, one of two, to what to whatever. It was in the beginning. I, I mentioned over at Creative Creature back when Loyal was just starting. Like everything was kind of yeah. moving along. You were trying to find a spot, and it was over in East County, in Northern County. Yeah, I me acuerdo donde madres está. But yeah, it's around there. Um, <laughs> but Preach I mean comfort. Why why is this important uh to have Mark here, uh Senor Miguel? No, oh, well, you know, it's um it's one of those been it's been one of those things where like Mark kind of lives in Chavo's lore right now. Um, you know, just it, it's it's you know, I heard the first time I ever heard like him talk or you know, talk about the travels or just be involved, like and well, anything with the travels, right? Was when he went on the Darren Smith uh show for the, mm-hmm. the unnamed soccer podcast with uh yeah, with, yeah, with Jordan, right? And mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. And that was the first time, and I was, that's what I heard him. He's he heard talking about it, and that's kind of uh, that was one of the first interviews, you know, besides seeing that uh, the post on the initial post on Instagram that it was starting up, you know, that first interview that I heard about it because I was very curious about it, and it wanted to, you know, it, it got me involved. And uh, wow. wow, I didn't know that he was moving, <laughs> and I was like, oh man, so I just say I kind of wanted yeah, to meet him stuff, and then. <laughs> And then he came out for the for the Germany game, and I was already in Virginia. I went out for work, and I, like it was kind of a surprise to everybody. And I was like, "Oh, geez, I missed it again, dude." So I mean, it's <laughs> someday it'll be in person, man. But for now, man, it's, it's it will. It's good, to, it will. It's good to be able to talk at least, you know, via Skype or you know, no, this, for whole, real. this whole thing. Yeah, man. I mean, that trip was man. That I mean, so to kind of kind of give everybody a background. So I mean. Yeah, so starting from one of the Padrinos for Chavos de Loyal. Um, man, I still remember that too because I was at the Costa Rica game and 
Kevin, I, we sat there and Kevin was like, yo, I want to start a crew. And I'm like, I'm in, let's do it. And then long story short, just turned it into what it is today, which is so cool. And then, um, man, I, I jokingly joke with even other circles too, other creative circles that as I'm leaving, everything starts to blow off and pop off. And then we moved out here to the East Coast. And so we've been out here, out here almost like three years now, which has been crazy, man. And um, I will say, man, that whole trip was, man, I was, I was, I was crying for every single thing. I'm not even gonna lie about that. Like crying on the way coming into San Diego, flying in, crying when I touched down, crying when I had an In and Out burger, crying when I had real Mexican <laughs> food. You don't even know it. It is a desert out here for Mexican food, yo. It is horrible, man. So it's uh that trip was that was amazing we'll go into that too but yeah definitely i was crying for everything coming back home dude i can attest man there's nothing better than flying into into san diego because i mean the Bro, second you real, uh, you just see balboa park on your right hand side yep. you, know, you see downtown peco park on the left and that's probably one of the best experiences i ever get mm-hmm. so always mm-hmm. flying to downtown but i can't imagine how it was for you man and uh, mm-hmm. i mean it's, it's really cool to hear too that you were still involved with the um with the phone calls with the with the travel yeah of, yeah how, how did that come about for you to come out here yeah. for that trip so man that was actually a surprise so that's that's the fun thing that's been the the blessing um being part of this movement i think why my heart is so attached to san diego loyal to travels to uh everything that we've been doing as a community um all the supporters and all of us is that there hasn't it hasn't felt like a beat has skipped even within the Padrinos, we've been I mean, our phone, we've had multiple phone calls until almost 1 a.m. my time, just talking about things, the movement, the future, making decisions, all that. So nothing what I love is, even though I'm not physically present, there has been a lot of conversation or just a lot of uh, vision casting or just a lot of updates. And so to still feel connected, what I love is that the boys have kept on uh, making sure that there is no disconnect, that there is no separation, even though we're literally across cross country from one another yeah. um that's been a huge thing and even ricardo and and just the connection that he's made even with me to be continue to be part of the team and update has been amazing as if i've been there with you guys the whole time so man that's something that's really really special that i hold on to for sure um uh, something that you know i'm not gonna bullshit bro no no nobody does that kind of things you know what i mean um that type of connection so this trip, honestly, man, it was a surprise from Ricardo and the boys. Um, they were telling me about the doorman game, and I was like, you know, I'm trying to get home. And they all came up with a solution to get me home. And when they told me that they were getting me home for the game, I, I again, I told you, I've been crying the whole time. I literally cried in that moment, too, because my heart's been craving to come back to the West Coast. And we'll get wow. into that, too. But, um, you know, we left for a reason financially we we got priced out of paradise and we had also an opportunity out here in Atlanta but I will say man you know my heart was disgruntled with California and San Diego and just you know leaving my state but leaving that paradise and coming out here um I'll never take for granted that city or the west coast ever again when my butt gets back home um it really shows me how much of a blessing it is to be from the West Coast. And even though I'm not from San Diego, I moved out there in 2008. Um, you know, I'm going to get the biggest 619 tattoo on my chest. And I'm going to be that fool, you know, walk around with Hell 619. Yeah. So um, it is the city, the team, all you guys, you guys have something special in my heart. So, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's really cool to hear, man. It's really really cool to hear. I'm surprised actually that the loyal are the ones that brought you out. That was pretty cool, man. It, you know, it was a group effort. Like Abe hit me up, Ricardo hit me up, all the boys hit me up, and they just put their heads together to be able to get me a ticket to get out here, which was real dope. And that was that was humbling. That was something that was just very special and something that I didn't I wasn't even expecting. And so. Um, just for them to even think of me that way, knowing that, you know, that the, the situation at that time was hard and they're like, all right, how do we get this dude home? And, and they did that, that, um, that, that was, man, I could say special, but, um, gratefulness, man, gratefulness at that moment, 
to be able to come home is I haven't seen that really. That's a rare thing for them to kind of go above and beyond as a collective to be able to do that. So that was that was phenomenal, man. And then yeah, seeing every seeing well, almost seeing everybody, and you could see you three, but you know, seeing basically a lot of we were there faces. <laughs> we were there. A, a lot of new faces, man. It was that was something that was super dope. So, uh, I'm curious. I mean, is it difficult at all to like? I mean, you move away right and you still stay connected and you still uh, mm -hmm. stay, you keep up with Daniel Loyal. Is it hard for you to keep up with everything going on, even though you have stuff going on over there in Atlanta? No, not not really, man. I mean, like, I'm not, you know, I'll be real. I don't watch every game just because sometimes the games out here go until like, if it's 6 30 to 7 30 for you guys that's almost yeah. midnight my time and so um but as far as like when it comes to the updates of the conversations with everybody that's something that that's actually been easier just because of text message um so what's been cool is is kind of sharing that culture of what we've seen with the locals and travels with people out here kind of kind of seeing um and i don't know if you guys remember me talking about Atlanta united way back in the day as far as when we were first yeah. starting and kind of influence that i see and you know my my perspective has shifted in both positive and also i don't know negative but definitely um things that i see that we are doing very well with such a a brand new community of supporters that um a supporter crew out here or multiple supporters out here or people that support this team um haven't really progressed in in the manner that I thought it was. Um I mean Atlanta, I'll say Atlanta is definitely a hotbed for soccer culture out here. There is really phenomenal. Yeah, that, that's what's really dope. There is a actually deep history. There's a crew called the Silverbacks, which was kind of like an independent team out here, professional team that everybody supported. Um the youth academies out here. It, it reminds me back home, honestly. There is a lot of youth academies, a lot of people coming out of the scene out yep. here then man everywhere you go and that's still true to this day talking about Atlanta United is man you see a flag a sticker or jersey all year long it, it, it's it's actually really remarkable I didn't even think that this I thought the south is all about uh what is that oh, man look they're, I'm gonna get in trouble what is it big 15 big 10 something something S football SEC, SEC, yeah. I don't even know, bro. Gold, gold terriers, I think is what they're called. Georgia State terriers, I think. Is what they're <laughs> sure. Called. <laughs> Trouble. With them, it, but, yeah. But, but yeah, man. No, that was um, that's definitely something that I've seen that was. It's been really cool to see that impact and um, really see even how that has uh, even more. At least my three years really sparked the international game i mean so like i said i work in specialty coffee and um uh working in hospitality man i have so many conversations with people about football culture international mls usl like it, it, it's really cool to see how many people out here are actually well informed and and really love this sport as much as they love their church of college football it, it's kind of dope so that's that's actually been um really cool to see as far as like the positive and everything that's been going on. So that's dope, man. Not now that we you kind of brought it up, right? But I kind of do want to dive in. We'll talk about the Dortmund game. We'll kind of save the best for last, right? That's that's just some of the best things that's happened so far. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you live in a city where there's MLS. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. How do how do you how do you like it? How what's the atmosphere like? Do you think San Diego will benefit from having MLS here? Man, that's a good question. Um let me kind of analyze Atlanta United. Um, going back to what I was saying before, yeah, it, it is it is super dope to be part of a community where literally everywhere you go, you see Atlanta United everywhere. Um, whether you're a casual or not, it, it's really something that the whole city gets around. And I definitely give mad respect to that as well. And um, a couple of years ago, when LAFC came out here, we went out there to go watch that game. And it was cool to see uh like footy mob man shout out to footy mob man they are some really really dope people and uh pioneers for black football and black football in the south and really bringing in black culture uh revitalizing and and reestablishing and and even i would even say um 
given remembrance that there is a deep history in black football here, which is re really, really dope. And I love those dudes. Uh, yeah, man, it, it's interesting. It, it's really cool. You know, there are, as I've kind of heard and talked to certain people within supportive groups, there are, you know, you will get the negative aspects that a lot of people have when it comes to how Elaine United came into into play and, and the location where the stadium was built. There was a, a beautiful historic black town in that area um, that there's a whole article, I believe the town was actually called Lightning and the community basically got moved away because they needed to build something big there. And so when you talk to a lot of Elaine United supporters and kind of seeing how, yes, you know, the community and the sport and, and the team in itself has really brought something really special to this community. At the same time, it was at the cost of certain cultures at the cost of certain communities and yeah, uh that's what happens hmm. yeah and and even you know um you you always talk about the, like whenever you talk to Atlanta United supporter they'll always go back to the days when they were playing within the city in itself and a smaller campus and a stadium and I always forget the stadium because obviously that ain't my team but it was the I want to say the first couple of years when they first started they were playing and you I pass it by all the time it's such an intimate dope little stadium and nice. when a lot of the supporters kind of talk about the original stadium there was a big sense of um kind of what I feel back home a lot of connection grassroots movement a lot of synergy um a, a lot of the glory days within the culture in itself. And as they kind of grew into what they are, that synergy is still there. But again, going back to that, you know, it's, a, it's at a cost of something. And so you get a, a lot of like mixed conflicts and, and mixed ideas behind the team. But overall, the impact of the team within the community is very powerful. It's really cool. And it's, it's really unifying. I mean, and, and that's the thing, like, that's what's, you know, coming in here, do you, do you feel any sort of type of way with MLS coming in and rumors of, you know, uh, San Diego loyal, you know, we don't know how they're going to pivot, yeah. if they're going to pivot, if they're going to be shutting doors down, like we, we don't know at this point. Um, but mm -hmm. do you feel some mm -hmm. sort of way being again, being here as a founding member and then seeing again, Atlanta and what they got in the MLS over there, man. Yeah. You know, yes and no. Yes. I have my, my perspectives. No, because, you know, I haven't been home for over almost three years now. So it's really hard to kind of get a litmus test of what is happening in the sense, but um, from the things that I've heard, you know, I'm going to be real about that, both positive and negative. Um, if, if I take the negative and I take it from perspective of this is one thing I can kind of give a critique on, from the little information that I do know is that I think my biggest thing, uh, more than anything, relationship, um, things like this is integrity. Uh, that's, that's my biggest thing. Like, I don't give a fuck how much money you have. I don't give a fuck what you're trying to do. Um, I, I want, I want to see your integrity character matters for me and, um, to not be goal. Here, here. Um, meeting everybody or just kind of at least being behind the scenes that to me just brings up a red flag and your intentions may be good behind how you're observing the community and how you're observing the growth of the supporters and the team here but if you can't come up to me and shake my hand and 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 tell me who you are and let me see your character you're sketched to me right off the bat there's no need for that and um and and I and I think too, you know, and this is my hope. And I know that there's a lot of good movement that is happening. I know there's some, you know, coming home and talking to some people that are part of that movement that's going to be going on. Um, you know, for me, I'll say this: I don't have any type of attachment to the MLS team. Um, I think I'm numb to it because I I think the way that I've just been received and loved and involved, even with me being over here that to me is integrity, that to me is character. And I'm going to support that more than anything. Um, and so for me, you know, San Diego loyal is going to be my team based off of they have always kept me in the circle and I've always kept me feeling like home is not far away. And that's huge for me. For the other team, I, I don't know who they are. 
But what I do hope is that you get to know the community. What I do hope is that you get to listen. You get to hear the people that have been in that in that city longer than they have. What I do hope is that they learn from not eye to eye contact and actually make sure to make the efforts to look someone in the eye and get to know that character and let them know that their character. Um, I'm not impressed by money for real. Like mm-hmm. I'm not. Mm-hmm. Uh, so th- that that's what I'm hoping. You know, I, I'm seeing the beauty of the rec- recognition of the First Nation coming in. And I think that is million percent dope. I think that is so huge. And I love even more development on the academies. But there are people here, even besides San Diego Loyal, you know, uh, people here that have been busting their ass building the community out here in San Diego for for youth development and even the culture in itself. And I really hope that there is that effort to bring unification. And even one of my biggest things, like like I'm just gonna kind of repeat that dead horse, but there, no matter what, what you do, like I said, if, if, if you are kind of doing something where I don't even get to see your face and you're just kind of investigating, gathering information, Okay, cool. Admit that. If as long as you can admit that and be like, hey, you know, that was that was on our end. That was that was my bad kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. Cool. Hey, what does that show me? That shows me integrity. That shows me that you're willing to admit the mistakes. And um even when it comes to San Diego, Lord, we all know there have been bumpy roads. There have been mistakes. But here's yeah. the thing that that I really appreciate is the mistakes have been, hey, that was us. That was my bad. Okay. How do we do better? Hey, we went this direction. Okay, dang. Okay, how do we do better? We want to hear your voice because you've been here longer, and that's huge for me. So, yeah, I mean, and you know, there was a a player here from where you're kind of from mm-hmm. at right now, hailing from right now over in that area. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, my my, I, I spoke to the guy. He was here, and then you know, I remember right that. that chair. I remember um, that. But like. What did you, I mean, this is kind of sidetracking, but like, well, sure. it, th- does that type of individual resonate with who you encounter on a day-to-day basis over in the Atlanta? Or is that something hey. like, because I mean, this like my biggest thing was like, he was like, hey, like my best friend's Mexican. And I'm like, cool. Like my first thought is like, what the hell does an Atlanta Mexican yeah. look like? And I guess, <laughs> you know, what music that they listen to? Like, yeah. Man, la cultura que no ita, bro. They're not. It's yeah. That's and that's a, and we can get into that conversation too, bro. <laughs> um, man, I love this. Let's go. Let's get in, man. Um, I'm a, okay. Let me be straight up. Okay, so let me let me kind of give you kind of a, an example, right? So we moved out here, and obviously, my my one of the big benefits is that my mother moved back home from Nicaragua around that same time, and. They ended up in Connecticut, and then my dad got a really good job in Huntsville. So a lot of when we were thinking about moving out here, we were like, okay, cool. We're going to be close to family. Um, I'm real stoked about that. I haven't been this close to my mom as far as proximity in over about five years, six years. So um, they moved into a town called Huntsville. Now it's actually something we're looking into. Thanks. Yeah. Um, Right? So (laughs) what I didn't know moving out to the South is that there are a term there's a term called the sundown town i didn't even know what a sundown town was have you guys heard of a sundown town i heard it for the first time about a month and a half ago and it is a very scary thought right so they moved to a community called if you guys don't know what a sundown town it literally means exactly what you're hearing don't be in that town if you're not from that town at both of, not, at nighttime if you're not you know yeah part yeah of, no uh, yeah yeah we'll get them or if yeah, you look like sense. nosotros right <laughs> Don't be there. And uh, so they live in a community called Gunnersville, beautiful lake town, but right next to it, bro, it's it's called Arab. It's literally spelled Arab, but they call it Arab. So Arab is one of those towns. But here's the here is the 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 ironic, funny thing, man. So my mama, my mama, bro, she is, you know, so my culture, my mom because the East Coast of Nicaragua, a lot of Afrocentric. 
community culture out there. My dad's from Managua, so completely different, more Aztec, more Mayan, more indigenous. My grandmother was Mosquito, which is, you could say it was both of the native and also African roots. So if you look at my mama, da negra, bro. She is like, you, you wouldn't even tell until she starts speaking Spanish. Mm -hmm. And so my mom really stands out out there. She hasn't had any issues. I mean, she had this one gentleman who was helping her out who would come up on like your typical, if you think about the South, he's got his Confederate flags flying, got his truck, um, has the same accent, real deep. How you doing, man? Right? <laughs> but man, the way that she, he took care of my mom at the time when my dad was working in Texas for a job and I was two hours away, couldn't help her move to where she's at now. He was watching over her and taking care of her. And that actually blew her mind and blew my mind. Wow. Um, I'm going to say this. I've actually have not received any type of racism from the white community out here. It's actually been the opposite. I'm going to be real wow. about that. Um, and, and that's a conversation we can't even get into, too, that... Um, porque soy diferente, you know, habla español, pero... So negro, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the people out there don't know what to do with me. And here's the thing, Atlanta is very cultured. It's, there's a lot of different ethnicities out here. But compared to back home, which I tell people about why I love home so much, and you know I'm so grateful for the West Coast and for where I come from, um, cultures out here are separated. Cultures out here are celebrated, bless your heart. Basically, what that means is you can you can go lick one kind of a thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's what bless your heart means. You know, man, I remember the first time ladies like, oh, bless your heart. I was like, oh, thank you, ma'am. And then like, bro, she just cussed you. I was like, for real? Like, so, um, <laughs> you know, people, man, Atlanta. Yeah, I can stop there and we'll, we'll, we'll I'll let you guys ask the questions, but a lot of my kind of frustrations or my pains or a lot of things that I've been, you know, I've had in conflict with, they've even been kind of judged and separated with by, um, has not been the white community. And that was wow. definitely oh. a, a shocker for me, for sure. See, yeah. shame on, not even shame on us, but like, yeah, a little bit shame on us. Like we go have our preconceived <laughs> notions as well. And that's, Something that isn't the easiest thing to do is just check your own biases at the door and, and you know, you mm -hmm. find things out like that. And and I think that it, just remove so far from that event, that situation, like people mm -hmm. are tired of hearing it about it. And I, I don't think there was a lot of resolve. And I don't think the ends justified the means at the end. Just kind of like bias, bias, bias. Para ese jugador, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like para ese vato, like mm -hmm. lo que hizo aquí en el equipo o sea, no vale la pena esa madre. Um, mm -hmm. Just in a soccer sense, but um, just you were hitting on, you know, just knowing it. And I think it, it, it's, uh, we're, we're just going to announce it right now too. Like, I, I don't think we talked to you, Miguel, about it. Talking about who the people are from MLS, right? Mm -hmm, we're going to mm -hmm. go ahead and have a chance to do that next week. We have confirmation that we're actually going to go ahead and uh, talk with, San Diego CS SDFC CEO Tom Penn. What? Um, in a sit down conversation, we're gonna go in person. In too. person, so that's wow. gonna be coming up. Um, and again, that's just an invitation here. You know, Chelas con Chavos. Chavos have made a move uh, and and expanded. And you know, we talk loyal. We talk everything. Talk MLS. So this is a, an opportunity. If you have questions, if you want something answered, uh, Mark, again, hit us up. Like, what's what would be mm -hmm. something that you would want to say, Miguel, like, or, or ask just to kind of encompass this movement that you're talking about? Yeah, I think, um, I think, it, you know, Mark kind of hit it, uh, hit the nail on the head right there when he's talking that, uh, that the San Diego Loyal, you know, they, they, they did learn a lot from they were, what they were initially trying to start. Um, and luckily for us too, I mean, we have a lot of people that have a lot of questions, you know, we have a lot of people that are uh, looking to see, Hey, what this, what's, what this MLS thing is all about. Um, Mm -hmm. I can tell you this right now. I don't know if you guys saw Jerry Jimenez's uh post right there, but you know, yeah. he he's the new supporter relations. Congratulations. Uh, supporter group. Yeah, congratulations, Jerry. Oh, yeah. Um yeah. the cool go. part about that right there to start off, you know, he's he's one of us. You know, mm -hmm. he's he's one of the he's one of the start off with the locals. He's sorry, he, he was one of the travels. And travels and then, in, yeah, initially. Yeah. So remember. And now it's just like it's like, okay, cool. That's that's a start right there, you know. And um 
And it, it's, it does take a lot, you know, to, especially to, to figure out how this community works because everybody's so proud. And, but at the same time, everybody has a different point of view on what this city means to them. Um, but we're all, we're all got that one common thing is that we love the city uh, no matter what. Um, and I don't like, like I said, it's just, uh, it's going to be one of those, I'm very curious about that, that interview. And I think I'm, <laughs> I'm probably gonna have a few questions here for that, but, you know, I do appreciate the fact that, uh, you know, that we're able to at least openly talk about this whole MLS thing, but at the same time, still maintain that support for loyal that, that a majority of us, um, still, still feel for, um, I mean, but as far as Mark, what do you think? Um, I, I know it did, it, I know it seemed like a hard pivot for us when we started going from loyal to MLS and it, it, mm-hmm. I don't think it was definitely, I don't think it was anything that was, that was planned. I don't think it was anything that was, uh, mm-hmm. It 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 definitely felt like a lot of people felt like oh man we're just jumping ship, um I yeah. I don't know did it seem like that from the you, chats you that know, we were having, man you know and that's where I have empathy man because I mean that 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 is what we all wanted and continue to want that's what we want is that right there is MLS in our city I think that is seriously the the dopest look man i'm gonna be real you know i'm still gonna be my black and gold you know like hey you know, a bunch of people are gonna hit me but and it's because of what i stated before yeah. there you know if i go back to that era um what really got me more involved into u.s soccer some more you know that's how i met jerry uh jerry can tell you how um uh, how we became friends which is so hilarious when he was one of the original pot fathers and man my mm-hmm. you know that's a funny conversation, man. I, I let's just say they used to have a voicemail. I used to call in, and my borracho bro would call in, bro, complaining about a game <laughs> and we're going anything, and you know, and um, and you know, then I met Kev that he had association, and like so there was a lot of connection, even though I wasn't really connected at all to the team, or and you know, I'm connected with the supporters crew out here for LAFC, but um what what i take away from what got me to really support that was the relationship that i've done out and you guys know i'm all about relationship i'm all about integrity that's i keep repeating that that's kind of who i am as a person um so sorry about that that's a lady texting me um so you know when it comes to the mls side i am i'm excited for the city because it's going to put our city on the map and i'm excited for the boys that are heading over there because it you know, if, if you're looking at the silver lining of things, and I, and I'm saying silver lining, if you see it as a positive, negative, and what's the what's that silver lining right there, is that we have the cultura going in, who know the community, and who have been in this community, setting the standard before somebody else comes in, and maybe disrupts or brings a different type of culture that isn't San Diego, and so that's the positive is for those who you know may not maybe feel in a certain way or whatever what we can hold on to is that first of all you can't you can't get mad if people jump ship or jump ship in that way you, you really can't and it's two different things you know what i mean it's it's two different tiers of professional soccer um mls is fun man just like usl usl is fun so you you can't get mad for people wanting to support that at all more than anything emphasize um support them but also encourage them to be the ones that are going to go in and set the culture there, you know, show, show people like, I don't know if I put myself in that category, but show people like me or whoever that are really extremely hating on this movement that's coming in with the MLS or people that are, you know, just looking from the outside and be like, I don't know you. So I don't, I don't, you know, my, my heart towards you isn't I don't know you. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Um, you know, for those kind of people, show them why, if I'm going to use that word, y- you trust and, and you feel safe. You you don't feel exposed. You don't feel taken advantage of. Um, prove that to us. Because that's just going to better the city. That's just going to better the game. That's just going to better this team in itself. So more than anything, man, if I really take... a, a you know, even more higher elevation to look down at this movement um, with San Diego and the supporters and people that are want to jump on and and really support this, this is going to be huge. And the same thing that I said years ago with Darren and the same thing that, you know, we talked about in the very beginning of the Chavos movement was that 
if we could like i love and going back to atlanta united i love how this community as far as the culture of atlanta united has really seeped beyond the game i mean man you'll see people again that are wearing the 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 colors and wearing the crest but they may not be as involved or knowledgeable about the game in itself but they're meeting really dope people and they've met a good friendship and they met good crews within this community of Atlanta's United soccer. Um, we have that same opportunity and I, and I look at, you know, St. Pauli and I look at what we've done on a very, very micro level with both supporters of really pushing in the injustice, really standing up for, for that. We have one of the dopest opportunities right now to shut all these motherfuckers up in the MLS as far as culture, as far as supporter culture, really even be the first ones to pioneer a different type of football supporter culture. That's not ultra. That's not uh, MLS cringe ultra. That's, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, have an, we have an opportunity to be a culture about growing the game to both elevate the academies and youth systems give opportunities to that, but really bring in the generation of different cultures that are going to help push this to a whole nother level and continue to get this, this ball rolling. We have something like, man, it, it's, it's really dope how this game more than anything, I get more excited about supporter culture than I do about the end. I love the game, but it's be, man, like I was telling you guys, I was crying the whole time, not the whole time, but I was crying <laughs> a lot thinking, bro, I'm home. I'm yeah. received, I'm home, you know, um, I'm meeting new, new family. I'm meeting new homies. I'm, I'm, I'm walking away from them after three hours of being knuckleheads with them, like big Remy, bro. And I'm like, bro, I miss you already. You know what I mean? Like I'm crying that I have to leave my people and San Diego <laughs> to kind of sum up my point, man, like San Diego, what it's really weird, bro. We kind of like, I went to Ohio, Ohio, bro. The nicest people ever, bro. It, it's ridiculous. Like oh, people want to mow your lawn. Like what? You just want to mow my lawn, bro. Like nicest people ever, bro. <laughs> and, and I've heard people say San Diego has like a Midwest culture feel. And that makes sense. Meaning, you know, we're very inviting, but what I also do see with, with the pride of the Midwest, now that I see baseball and everything out here and, and, and fo American football out here is that, bro, don't step on their toes. And I see that with our city too, is like, yo, come enjoy our city, come enjoy our people, come enjoy our culture, but don't step on our toes. And so, yeah, to sum it up, man, I encourage people to, oh, bro, fuck whoever is trying to tell you that you're just a, a bandwagon hopper, you're jumping ship, like, First of all, it's just a game. Let's just be real. It's just a game. You have no involvement financially. Maybe, I don't know, but I doubt it. Y your your voice is going to do something, but you're not sitting at those boardroom yeah. conversations. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the only thing you can control is how are you going to inspire? And here's your thing is your inspiration is probably going to inspire those leaderships, that owner that person who's watching you guys, your inspiration is probably going to make them be like, dang, okay, um, you've, re you've really humbled me or you've really encouraged me, you know? And, and I think we all can see that we have that testimony right now, even with San Diego Loyal. And I can definitely see that testimony of how voices can really inspire leadership out here. And so yeah, that's kind of my, my three-hour <laughs> answer to <laughs> that question of the MLS coming in. And I think it's just a matter of keeping them accountable, right? Um, I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys have been paying attention, but they're dropping some like serious videos of the community and pickup soccer. And they did one with Chicano Futsal and Bridge Barcada. And it was cool. And we we're trying to see what direction they head in, they, they were going to head into. Yeah. Then they tweet out, oh, where's where's the Cascaritas at? Like, you know, uh, not spelling it correctly, you know, and Tony here. Yeah, we're not just, here grammar policing. It's like, but if you're going to do it, do it right. A $500 million uh, institution. Like so, if I send an email like that in my job and I don't like it, like, cause it's not professional, like whatever. If you're trying to be for the streets, like, again, like, I don't know of anything that, or any time that that's ever kind of spelled that way. We looked it up. We literally yeah, no, no, looked no, it up. It. We went to Google.mx and, you know, <laughs> just did, did the searching like, no, no, no I want to make sure. 
And it's again yeah. not being grammar police. It's just making sure that there's a respect to what's already here and what what yeah. builds it, man. Like the other day, bro, we went over to to Tijuana and we watched. I took um, you and I took uh, our friend uh, Ryan. I was just gonna name drop him. Uh, el fotógrafo del hoyo, el, el güero ese. Um, mm-hmm. Just took him to like Las Canteras and literally like just to go see an indoor soccer game on a Tuesday, on a uh, Thursday. Mm-hmm. Dude, um, those get wild, man. La, la, the, the taxi drivers that come off from, you know, their 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 job uh, and just go together and play. Uh, uh, sen- like, the kids that come out after soccer, oh. uh, after school, because they go into the afternoon school because there's morning school and afternoon school, depending where you go. Like all these nuances and like we again we just want to be that voice that you're talking about mark in the mm-hmm, in that mm-hmm. kind of boardroom like look we have mm-hmm. access fortunately we're thankful um to obviously jerry but tom penn like that's the ceo that's the dude and we're two dipshits are getting allowed to talk to him and have interesting <laughs> questions hopefully and just really get to the nitty-gritty because i don't want this to be a watered down la that's that's really yeah. what i just don't want because yep. that's just what's that's what can be I don't, I don't know it's hard because it's a blank canvas right and you want to take inspiration from where it's worked we already have a stadium designed by the guy that designed lafc so sure we have lafc's former ceo now sure uh, i mean again it's, how it, is this it, gonna it looks be, like it's gonna hang how is this is gonna be different how is it gonna be san diego mark what is san diego to, to you and again does do these videos as you're talking to you does that reflect what San Diego soccer is, uh, and and and, and uh, if I and can it's go not first, harping on the individuals, yes, yeah, and if I can go first, I mean, uh, they drop episode two, right, and it's just guys playing pickup at San Diego State, uh, in the new turf field they have, and it's super nice. They drop episode three, right, and they ask questions, they're answering good, like this guy says, ni aquí ni de allá, which is very significant. I mean, some people resonate with that. One of them did say in the like, oh, we've never had a team here. And you know, obviously that 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 pissed people off because we have plenty of teams. We have the soccer, yeah, we have Loyal, we have San Diego oh. Wave, and, and it's nothing against the guy Albion. that said it. We have Albion too. <laughs> I mean, let's not forget Albion, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. We have. There's nothing against this guy, but you know, we called it out in our episode yesterday and today, this morning, they delete that video. It's back up now. It's back up now without that part. So they edited that part mm. out. So that tells me, okay, they're. Listening, they're paying attention. They want to get it right, but at the same time, do your research before you're dropping everything and saying, "Okay, it's all about the community." You're like, no, I mean, as a community, we all back each other up here. Yep. That means San Diego Loyal will shout out San Diego Wave whenever they win or something like that. In- interact, collaborate with the soccer or anything, and and I think we can do a way better job here. But I mean, to just disregard that and drop that and mm-hmm. put it in your social media to me, that's not a step in the right direction. And hopefully, they're able to learn and fix it. But to me, that's just something that needs fixing right away. Man, hundred percent. And and it's see that that's okay. I'm up. Let's be real, man. Like that's the thing that makes me be like, okay, okay, cool. There's hope. And then, oh hell no, bro. Like th- that right there. It it shows me you. At least from what I'm seeing, outside perspective, I could be ignorant to what's going on. You're still not doing the very thing that makes me distrust you. You're not mm-hmm. meeting with the people that have been here. You're not meeting with the rasa that's out here. Like, this is something that's interesting, right? So you look at over here in Atlanta, you have Colombians. There's a big Mexican community out here, but Colombians, Argentinians, um, Nicaragüense también, bro. There's a bomb, Nicaragüense out here, bro. So when you guys come out, bro, let's, you know, I'm taking you. I was stoked on that. Yeah, like, no, I'm down. Go. Let's Actually, go. Right? I might have a training out there later on this year. Hey. Yeah. Got a house, so you just let me For know, sure. bro. I got you. Um, for sure. So when, when I when I look at, okay, I always tell people, it's really hard for me, ironically, to relate to the Hispanic community on the East Coast and South. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it's because even though you said Nicaragüense, I grew up around Mexican culture. And it wasn't until moving out here where it's like, you know, yes, we from the Blanquitos all the way to whoever and mm-hmm. back home, you're 
involved in some type of way with Mexican culture because that is the heartbeat of California. That is California, right? Yeah. Over here on the East Coast, um, unfortunately and sadly, there isn't a voice for the Mexican community out here. So the Mexican community is kind of separated out here. Mm. Even in the Cuban community and the Puerto Ricans, like the Puerto Ricans are fun, bro. Puerto Ricans are fun. But when I talk <laughs> to people in the community, bro, like the Puerto Ricans, they're just... <laughs> they're, they're, you know, they have an identity on the East Coast. They have their, their culture, right? Cubans, what I'm learning out here is that Cubans, depending on la, la color, mm -hmm. there's... There's a war between the two different yeah. cultures, right? Uh, where I'm trying to get with that is is this is that you kind of miss the you miss two things if if I'm if I'm gonna say this just from what I'm seeing at San Diego or San Diego football soccer I don't know what the team name is SDFC we'll go with SDFC, SDFC until they okay. change it into yeah. SDFC. You messed up one by not having intentional, and I mean. Don't go just to the main people you've been speaking with. Go sit down to other people, not just the leaders and supporters crew, but other people that also have a voice behind the scenes and sit down with them. Go, go, go eat somewhere. Go walk the neighborhood with somebody. Go learn about the community. So you messed up because you you said something and then you took it back. You taking it back shows me just admit your mistake. Mm -hmm. that that's what i care about you're showing every time you hide something you show me there is no integrity from my perspective which makes me hesitant right and at the okay. same time don't do this number two and don't do this and, and this is something that you you learn at least when you go to miami is look embrace the hispanic culture that is the hispanic culture in that community what i mean by that is don't try to bring in your different language or or culture or thought process whether you're south or latin america into a community that may not be embraced it because what you're indirectly trying to say in that very moment is that i i'm more important than this community instead mm -hmm. of me getting involved in this community so if you really want to learn how to attach yourself to that community speak the language of the community that you're going into when i'm speaking spanish out here with, with, with certain people you know i have to change my dialect and i do so because i want to connect with you i want to yeah, know yeah, your, yeah. i want to know your culture you know and then when i'm when i'm talking to the mexican crews out here yeah it's gonna come out like as if i'm back home and my heart just flutters like crazy butterflies because i'm like let's mm -hmm. go so i would say that is one you missed it by not admitting your mistakes admit your mistakes because the longer you hide it the more you're going to get disgruntledness and mistrust and two Go eat with people. Go walk the neighborhoods. Go walk in their shoes. Like, I'm tired of, I'm going to be real, bro. Like, I'm, and I see this out here, man. I'm tired of people with the money that want to complain or want to be involved, but you never lived even two hours in that person's shoes. You, you don't know how to empathize with their community. You have a fake sense of justice or a fake sense of support, but your support doesn't mean shit because you don't know how to empathize. You're just following the trends or you're trying to create a trend or you're trying to be part of something that you really don't care for. You want to build something beautiful and strong and fucking badass and whoop LAFC and whoop everybody out here and whoop Miami? Bro, start with the supporters. Look at Austin. Again, I go back to Atlanta United. What footy mob is continuing to do as far as really making sure that everybody who's involved at Atlanta United is, hey, don't forget the Black culture in, in American soccer here, the deep history of Black culture out here. And also, don't forget for them, the 404. Don't forget what Atlanta stands yeah. for. And that's what I would really respect about Atlanta United is, again, they really, I mean, I don't know if you guys saw those 404 kids. I'm not copping one. Heck to the no. But it's dope <laughs> because they really went deep into, yo, this is part of the history of Atlanta. So that's 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 kind of my two cents on that. No, I mean it, it's all important um, because again, this is what's this is what's at stake here in San Diego. It's still ours. It's still the people's, and we want to make sure that that does happen. And again, positive stride to the credit of the MLS and and SDFC is is they're they're doing the boxes are getting checked. Is that are those boxes intentionally being checked? For the most part, yeah. But mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. um you know credit where credit's due like again we'll see what the final product is what gets rolled out what the crest is what you know everything essentially it's the, it, we've seen this with san diego loyal we've seen this with san diego wave um here in and it seems like everybody's kind of tapping into those similar similar things and i'm just again curious like what what's going to make san diego stand apart from lafc from another cookie cutter mm. mls team like that what is san diego and that's always been my question mm-hmm. even to, to people who live here like Tell me what represents San Diego. People are giving loyal shit because of the waves and, oh, nobody, not everybody lives by the coast. All right, Julian. All right, uh, Vista. Like, okay, dude. Um, I get it. 100%. Valid. South Bay. Represent. Whatever. But what is San Diego? Military town, the sea world, the zoo. But I, I, I find it, I find a very difficult time finding something that is truly San Diego. And I've, I'm, I'm, I've been, I was born here, born and raised like, man, you you know, okay. So that's, that's a good question. Okay. So one of the things moving out here, right. One of the things that I will say that I'm grateful being out here on the East coast slash South is to, to get a better understanding of Americana culture or American culture, like sure. Civil rights. Sure. You know, all those different things we read about them. I understood them. I could relate to them to an extent because we kind of have, we not kind of, we had our own sit-ins, we had our own movements, but it was, I, I didn't know how to relate to the United States because the West was still under Mexican territory and, and first nations while the United States would become the United States. We literally have two different history mm-hmm. going on. Right. And so coming out here, I really got to get a sense of, this this patriotism which i you know look i i love i love nicaragua i love that country but bro live third world is hard that's a that's a whole different 100 oh, yeah you know i mean Keep so i mean right right we're talking so, to a patriot here with a myth with miguel like a literal american hero yeah oh, right come on. Yes, yeah, no, 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 i you, I would never. I'm sorry. <laughs> there you go. Like, I would never. <laughs> like, yeah. thank you for what you do. Appreciate it. Real, bro, I would bro, never. Bro, for real. So wh- where I'm going with that is like, I I know, I, I know now when people say I'm from Texas, don't call them somebody from the deep south. You're going to get rocked by a cowboy boot straight up on your forehead. I get it. I understand Texas. I understand the difference between Tennessee and Georgia and Alabama, and they border one another, and they're all in the same area, and you'd be like, bro, they're the same. No, they're different, right? And so what I see with San Diego is that the, I obviously one, Mexican culture, the foundation, the movement of Chicano movement, lowrider culture, everything that is Mexican American culture, that is something, my, my boy out here, Yvonne, love this dude bro a, a pioneer and a creative for atlanta one of the things that he says he's like bro i can't wait to go with you to the west coast he's like why he's like because i don't know what it feels like to be in a community where i'm seeing mexican culture there's mexican culture out here in atlanta but you don't feel it in the culture it's just another community 30 minutes away or hey bro come get some good tacos over here like that's <laughs> what it is right like Whereas in he like even even when we're talking about Chicano culture, we're talking about things he's fighting for. He's like, bro, the Mexicans don't receive me, and the Southerners don't really receive me, right? And so what I see with, with San Diego, man, is that one, it, Mexican culture is the identity. But I think the really beautiful silver line, not silver line, I, um, non descriptive identity of San Diego is that ident- San Diego doesn't really have a an Americana identity. It is a melting pot. It is a community of so many different ethnicities that supports all those ethnicities. And it's, bro, it's real unique. It, it's something that you don't, I haven't experienced maybe New York, but that's when I think about home is the fact that everybody, and we have our, we have our shit, but everybody celebrated back home. And everybody recognizes, go down to PB, Boja Carayo, bro. You're going to get submitted by some black belt in jiu-jitsu out there, bro. 
you're gonna get the you're gonna get the best feijoada out there, bro. Like there, you can go anywhere in our community and feel the embrace of that community in San Diego, and at the same time know that it is San Diego. So I would say that's San Diego. So you take that, translate that into football. That's what it is, bro. Again, get a comment, come into my house, bro. Yo, money dudes. Let's go walk. Let's go to Lemon Grove. Yeah, Let's go down to Skyline. Let's go down to the Barrio. Let's go down to TJ. That's not TJ. just the gate, the the, the border. You know what like, I mean? I'm I'm taking people down down there, Brand. Like I've I've done tours. <laughs> it's it has been. it's it's pretty interesting, pretty neat. Um, mm-hmm. so now. Miguel, uh, what do you think as far as uh, to kind of just drive us home here? Like San Diego, what does it what does it need? Like you've also yep. been traveled here in the states as well. Yeah. And, um, it, it's one of those, it's one of those areas where, uh, it, it kind of happens in major cities. Um, you go to a certain neighborhood, you kind of feel that you feel that vibe of that neighborhood. Um, you know, like it, people ask me, what does San Diego feel like? It's just, well, it depends, right? Like, what do you, what do you think San Diego is? Is it just beaches? Is it just, you know, is it just like, like Mexican food? Is it you know, people, people didn't even know we had like native Americans out here. Like it was, it was that crazy. And, uh, um, it's hard for somebody to pinpoint exactly what it is. Uh, for me, every single time I came back from wherever I was going, it's just one thing for me. It's just home and that's it. Like I, like I said, you know, we're talking about coming into the airport. You just feel different, right? You feel like you're going to go those 10 minutes south and you're going to be home. Either you, or you're going to go those, you know, those 15 minutes east and you're going to be home wherever, wherever with your crew is and stuff. And um, and I, I think for for a team to be able to hit, you know, the, hit the nail on the head here is for a team to be embracing of everything that's going on and the loyal they're one of them man you know and you know San Diego C some so far from what I've heard like they're doing they're doing pretty okay so um I don't know man I think it's just gonna have to be somebody to people just have to be able to embrace and just forget about this whole notion that they're trying to fill a void that the Chargers left like I'm I'm sick and tired of that excuse man I don't want I don't want that excuse anymore man it's like the Chargers mm-hmm. left not everybody was a football fan. Not everybody was a Charger fan. So don't use that. I mean, I heard Atlanta too is like uh, that the soccer fan or a football fan in Atlanta, the 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 footy fan in Atlanta is is completely different from the Falcons. Um, that's mm-hmm. kind of what I want here, man. I don't want to be compared to Los Angeles. I don't want to be, uh, um, I don't want to be like a like a mold or like or, or fit a, a project or you know a plan that they that they did in LA that's going to work for San Diego. It's like hey. For the for the initial part, yeah, sure, whatever. Do whatever you gotta do to build a team. Okay. Just realize and understand that we're different down here. And I mean, even if people don't see that, you know, we feel it. You just gotta be able to to embrace that. And um, I don't know, man. I mean, you see it all the time. You know, with our backpack drives. Um, you know, with the with the food drives that we got going on. Uh, it's just, it, you know, it's it's everybody. Everybody just kind of helps out at the same time. And I just don't. I don't want to. I don't want our like certain like uh like our our city to be represented by picturesque you know like scenario like scenes you know like like oh yeah Chicano Park Chicano Park is fucking awesome don't get me wrong but we it's not just that right it's like you know yeah. uh the you know, the beach is awesome but it's not just that I mean like go down to San Isidro man freaking go check out you know the Las Americas the, the mall or something like that. do stuff that people do on a normal weekend. Cause oh, bull riding in Lakeside, bro. Yeah, exactly. Go, go do something <laughs> else, man. Cause it's like, I can tell you this right now. I don't go to the beach every freaking week. I, there's, sometimes there's months that I don't even go to the beach, man. But yeah, that's true. For some reason, yeah, people think that I just go to the beach all the time. It's just like, no. <laughs> I mean, so, so that's the thing about it, man. I think I, I hope people just kind of start connecting with the city itself instead of instead of then trying to connect with what people think the city should be. You know, I don't know if that makes sense. No, that, no that's yeah, the hundred percent makes sense. You talk about feeling right, like let's let's get into it. The best part we talked about earlier. I mean, that Dorman match, like the culmination of so much work, so much everything that went together uh, to make that happen. Um, what did that What did that feel like to see in the in the lights, Champions League contender and World Cup winner, World Cup winner playing versus the boy Charlie Adams. Good old Chaz. Good old Elijah. Well, Elijah was hurt that day. But whatever. You get the point. <laughs> we had that ass. We had that ass. <laughs> and then those big motherfuckers are like, look, bro, watch me play. <laughs> but, man, yeah. you know, 
man, I, I think I'm gonna be real, man. I, I was I, I was just more focused on coming home and being with everybody. I think that's for me was the big like my homie back here. Um when I told him I was going home, he's like, Who are you guys playing? We're playing Dortmund. He's like, as we're playing Dortmund. What the what, what's Dortmund doing? That's dope. That's super dope, man. Um, I can't give you too much reflection on the game in itself. I think it's so beautiful that we were able to do that. And I think that's definitely, you know, a check that's going to bring more eyes. But, um, you know, my, my focus was just embracing the moment with all the homies and watching everybody and, 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 and kind of savoring that. So that was for me, man. Hell yeah, man. Like, that, that's, that that's was really stuff. cool, man. Um, I'm glad that loyal was able to provide that for everybody who's worked hard in and outside of the club. Uh, it was really a reward for, for everybody. Uh, one last thing, Miguel, if you just want to give us a rundown of this backpack drive, right? I mean, Mark, yeah, I know you're, you're over there, but I know, you, you know, you're, you're very well aware that the boys and the girls down here, Las Madrinas, Las Madrinas, las madrinas putting in you know, bro. elbow grease. Happy Chavo putting in work too. Happy Chavo. <laughs> I mean, everybody that got out there, uh, making it happen, making it work, um, just kind of give us a res- el resumen, the summary of Dude. backpacks given stuff people coming out how was it it was uh so for, first of all just uh want to thank uh border x for for providing us uh they they, pro- they provide us with some really prime real estate man uh you know like with the like the the doors the the big roll-up doors that fit the you know the face of the street they gave us that mm-hmm. whole little part of real estate right there so that was really cool of them so thank you for them for uh for helping us out and providing us that space and also getting us uh you know, given, you know, we, we, we got a little extra love sometimes, you know, with the beer and stuff. So that was pretty cool. Um, but then also too, man, just, uh, you know, Adrian again, you know, was able to collect enough and we handed out a little bit over 200 backpacks, I believe. I think that's what Adrian did to count on. And we actually had more backpacks and school supplies, which was actually, um, you know, we were able to fill like the, yeah, so the last couple of years we had a, we had a lot of school supplies, and sometimes, you know, more that could fit in, uh, you know, more than more, more that could fit in the backpacks that we had. But this time, you know, we had backpacks for, I mean, we had backpacks for days. I mean, the loyal provided a lot of Charlie backpacks, um, sick. San Diego FC also, they provided, uh, they provided some, uh, some Adidas bags as well. Um, and then, uh, the, the locals came out, you know, we had a few locals come out, they helped us out. Uh, you know, the Madrinas, of course they did all the organization. They just told us where to go and we just shut up and did whatever they said. On oh, the day of, good. right? That's just that's just the way yeah. it is, man. You know, they're um, you know, they, they have a whole different sense of organization than we do, and we know that. Um, we did have the Chavos Frontera Ultras uh in inaugural, I I guess uh I guess shirt, um, you know, piece of swag, and that was only available for that day for people that came out. Love it. Um and it was it it dude, it looks amazing, it feels amazing. Um and you know it was again it was it was a very very successful event and just completely crushed our numbers from last year uh you know we're definitely excited for for next year for sure i think we're actually thinking about taking it to uh to another city another another uh another city in san diego um we're we're talking uh i don't know we're throwing out a few ideas you know maybe like lemon grove san Isidro, chula vista might try to go a little bit south bay a little bit more Mm -hmm. um and you know now the focus you know is shifting on the the turkey drive you know like that's gonna that planning's already starting um again adrian this is a very very busy time of year for that guy i'm still trying to get that's a great picture of my saying i'm trying to get them to come out on the show yeah um, we don't want to i know I, I, yeah we tell them it's all the time people want you guys out there assassins. mark make it happen They're like yeah i'll tell them yeah i was on oh, there man. you guys can be there <laughs> it's just you know it, it's just trying to get them all together at the same time and just uh you know, mm-hmm. just making sure that they're all they're all about it. But I mean, for the most part, the, the backpack drive complete huge success. A lot of kids smiling. Um, you know, and like I said, a lot of people came out to support. So we really want to thank everybody. And uh, oh, yeah. you know, now just shifting our focus to the uh turkey drive, you know, make sure that one's um that one's a big success too, you know, for, for coming around. And also too, we're working on the um on the frontera ultra stuff still, you know, in the back in the background. Um, and then you know, just kind of hunkering down for this little uh this little end of season that we got going on with the loyal, hopefully they can you know continue with this little play and make the playoffs, you know, that'd be cool. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah, no, we, it was a very, very busy month and, you know, we're kind of glad like we get a little break this week. little breathing room, little breathing. Oh, room. We're going to do Twitter spaces. So 
Uh, that's going to be cool coming on down. If you want to listen to the game in Spanish, Mark, on Twitter, and we do it in Spanish, that's pretty cool. Sync up the time, sync up the time, sync up the, the sound. Um, if I was to say, want to join, because I know the Chavos Ultras have a separate Discord. Yes. How, how would mm -hmm. one yep. go about that after receiving, obviously, all the information because they signed up here uh, for the Chavos membership? Check everything yeah. out here. Still open for everybody, but how would one go about that? Yeah. So right now we're um we right now the the we're trying to get um we're trying to make sure like the we're getting um I guess members that are vetted almost a little bit. You mm -hmm. know, we're trying to we're trying to start this off not just like you know not just throw it out there for people to get started Discord. We want people that are just kind of going to be in. They're going to be involved. Um, you know, especially year one coming up and and leading up to year one. Uh, so the best way to get your information in right now is to send a message via via Instagram on the Chavos Frontera Ultras uh, page. Um, just send a message to that. We're still collecting all the emails. Um, we're collect we're collecting all the information. Uh, that gives that gives us a couple things too, right? It gives us the the opportunity to, you know, to kind of see who's sending us the message because we want to be we want to make sure everybody that you know we want to be involved with everybody that's coming in. We want them to know that hey, you you, you can come in. We we're gonna be personal with you from the beginning. Just the way the Chavos of Loyal started off, right? Everybody's just going to start, you know, from the get-go. You're going to be a part of the family from the beginning. Um, and from there, we're going to start getting later on. We're going to start opening up uh, memberships. You know, at some point, we're going to have some sort of paid membership, too, like in the future. Uh, before, this is a whole different monster than from the USL is used to. So, you know, the MLS one, we have to start thinking about you know, like taxes and all that stuff. So it, it, all this stuff is just, oh. it's gonna, I know, right? We got to start paying the man at something or or we got to fill out some mm -hmm. forms for the man. That, that's kind of what it's it goes. Man, bro. Yeah, we don't want to be like those, uh, like those LA Galaxy supporters, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just saying it, dude. It's like, they got, <laughs> they got screwed over a little bit there. But, but yeah, we're trying to, we're trying to make sure we start off on the right foot. For sure, one hundred percent. I love everything, Mark. We have to do this again. Oh, hell please, we yeah. like, have to do this is, again. This, uh, people oh God, will very much enjoy this again. You're a mythical figure in Chavo's lore. Um, so <laughs> you know, there's, there's, there's that. And so, whenever you come back again, let us know. Uh, we'll, well, we want you here and do it in person. Punch in this uh, we're cleaning up the garage yes. to allow for more look, of that. Look, I'm, I'm putting my. I'm putting my pennies away for when we make it to playoffs and we go deep. Michaelito's coming home, bro. I'm gonna sit right there in that little blue seat right there, bro. So there you go. I'm gonna do it. Hundred percent, man. No, and uh, again, uh, thank you for for everything. And if there's anything that we we can do, because you know your outside perspective, it's really interesting how you you know were in it, then now you're forced kind of to have mm -hmm. that outside perspective. It's if it if if anything and San Diego soccer in general ever has its head up its ass too far, just make sure to let them know. Yeah, yeah, man. Hey, what what you guys are doing too, man? Like for real, you guys are bringing such a voice to our city, man. And hey, this is just the beginning. I can't wait to see you guys in that World Cup stage. I can't wait to see you guys in the in the press behind that, man. Like what you guys are doing, honestly, is so fucking dope, bro. And I'm so stoked to see this growth and you guys are going to fucking kill it even more, man. You guys are literally an example for the city, man. And uh, I appreciate the rawness and the realness and just how you guys just, you don't give two shits, man. You're going to call things out <laughs> when you call them out and you're going to support things out. And if that offends people, well, bro, they can go, I don't go, know. go color or something, bro. So. I'm looking forward to that Tom Penn interview, man. I really am. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, we, 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 yeah, we are, we're, we're drafting some questions. We're, yeah. Because again, and that's the thing too, we have to play the game. Like we have to play the game too. Like yeah, you're talking yeah. about like, hey, the rawness, the rawness. Yeah. Like I can't, I can't just be like, hey, bro, like I have Andrew's number. <laughs> you have, I have your number. Let's three-way call and let's get this done. Like out of nowhere, like no. hell Mary. It's like, <laughs> I don't know. Like can't, <laughs> can't be one. doing that. Yeah. Question one. Uh, well, well, you know, we do ask the tough questions. So, you know, we're going to. We got to keep a balance there, but it's going to be a good one for sure. And we're definitely excited for that. But gentlemen, is there anything else you guys would like to throw for this pod? Uh, I'm good right now. Actually, no, I do want to say something real fast. Um, September 8th, I believe we have one of our very own uh, Davey. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you guys have seen him in the drum line. He is going to be boxing in Little Italy, making his oh, amateur yeah. debut. I saw Sick. that. 
Yeah. So everybody and anybody come on and cheer him on because we're all going to be there. He's been training with, uh, you know, his sparring partner, Remy, and then uh, Kevin's been coaching him too. So it's, it's an all travel fair going on that day. Remy's too, a man. boxing coach. Remy's a sparring partner. But like, yeah. so he, he gets yeah. down with it. Yeah. 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 Uh, Remy spars with him and then Kevin's actually teaching him. So it's like, and you know, Kevin's, uh, Kevin's a boxer too, man. So it's going to be, so is this going to be, is this going to be another, an, another channel on the subreddit of Ch- Chavo's boxing? Academy <laughs> have, there, there's a, there's a Chavo's boxing club channel. Uh, so, so, I mean, on the, uh, on the Discord. Is there really? Yeah. So Chavo's boxing club. And they're always talking about like, you know, you know, training, they're showing pictures, you know, Remy's been helping out, uh, Davey no with this, with the sparring and stuff like All that. Right. They post videos. So yeah, man, they, I'm telling you, man, he they're uh, also his way. See, it just dude, but I mean, it's good for him, man. Like, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, very, I'm telling you, I'm very proud. Uh, uh, you know, I'm very proud of Davey there. Cause he said it like six weeks, six months ago. He's like, Hey, I'm thinking about boxing. I was like, shit. Okay, cool. Go ahead. And then like gonna two, get down. two months ago. Yeah. He stopped drinking. He's been working out. He's hell yeah. He's, he's getting in shape, man. Oh yeah, man. Love it. All Love right. It. That's dope. Mark your calendars. Perfect. Everyone, September 8th. Yep. Mark, anything else you'd like to throw at us? Man, nothing except for I'll be home soon. That's the goal. I'll be home yeah. soon. Look forward to it, man. Embrace, embrace, embrace our city. Uh, I will get, like I said, yo, look, it's going to be the most obnoxious 619 on this body right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a great picture whenever whenever that does come down, bro. Yeah, no, I, mean, I ain't playing, bro. I ain't playing. <laughs> but no, good talking to you guys, um, man. Miss this, miss home, miss you guys. Yeah, man. And I can yeah. connect again. Definitely. Let's do it again, man. Appreciate Definitely. your time. Thank Thank you guys for joining us. See you later. Thanks, Bam. Right. Um, bam. All right. Cool. Oh, I think he left. Yeah, man. Sick. It's oh, a good episode, that dude. Fun. That was a good one. Yeah. Love it. Dude, he like he's he's a good talker.